Shabbat Shalom. Kalahua. Tawada. To our great Ama Abba Frame Shape. Only sessions. Chandra. Leviticus chapter 25. And Hawa spoken to Moses in Mount Sinai, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When you come into the land which I give you, then shall the land keep a Sabbath. Unto Hawa Adanagas is getting their land, tilling their land, enjoying their land, praising Hawa on their land. I see y'all. Nagaville is active. Joy World is act. Copper Land. Man, the Naga Hill. Nappy Goat Farm. <laughs> hey, I'm a bro veteran. Uh, man, I mean, Nagaville is active. Nagas almost every day hit me up like, yo, drop. I just got some land. Just got, you know, <laughs> check, check out what we doing over here. It's just perfect timing because we're not robots. You know, we don't automatically, you know, download some type of uh, perfect program. Nah, man, we we got to go through the fire. <laughs> we have to make choices. Robots don't get to make choices, man. I mean, maybe the AI do. Maybe the AI... <laughs> Maybe the AI could choose that, but we ain't no robot, man. You know, Hawaii expects us to make choices from that spirit, from that Ruah. So when you come into the land, first of all, know that you got land that's given to you by birthright. Then shall the land keep a Shabbat. So how the land going to keep a Shabbat? And you ain't resting. The land ain't got to wait seven years for you to keep a Shabbat. To prove that you keep Shabbat. You got to prove that on a weekly basis. Charging up that land. So that land knows. This is Baruch. Here I can keep my Shabbat. Six years shall you sow the field. Six years shall you prune your vineyard and gather in the produce thereof. But in the seventh year shall be a Sabbath of solemn rest for the land. You think because uh, they tell you JC come, you ain't got to keep your body. Go to church on a Sunday. So should your land go to church on a Sunday? Your land don't got to keep a Shabbat no more? Because that's just something that was put in place until J.C. comes in the New Testament. No laws, no laws. You don't have to put the most high over everything. No, you praise J.C. now. You put everything in the name of Yahweh Shai. Now inspire trying to let us know, man, AI hey, to the bro. That is most high over everything. Everything, boss. Everything. That's commandment number three, you know. You can't play with it. Because then you ain't got no land to play on. Because if you ain't no cold keeper, how's Hawa going to put you 
in charge over the land to make sure the land is getting the rest that is required to be fruitful. You're not being fruitful in your life, in your weeks, because you refuse to KTC or keep the, keep the cold, keep the Shabbat frequency up. So if you're not being fruitful, how can you ever have land that's fruitful? And what's the point of having land that's fruitful if you don't got no security? And how do you have security without no <gasps> breath? Wow. Foundation. Secure breath is what we require. Ain't no point of having land if it's not secure, man. Ain't no point of having breath if it's not secure and foundation. Shabbat Shalom. It's about the rest. It's not about religion and vanity. Their doctrines and religions are vain if they don't have no breath. And if it's not getting you in cold, then how is foundation? Where's Hawa in the New Testament? Where's Hawa in these doctrines? Where is thus says Hawa? And Hawa spoken to Moshe. So this is thus says Hawa, saying, speak unto the children of Hashirah, that breath. Say to them, thus says why, when you come into the land, which I give you, who? JC. Muhammad's going to give you some land? I haven't seen that yet. I haven't seen none of these false guys come give land to the tribe. Not any tribe, the tribe. None of them have come and put two cross sticks back together. Two sticks combined to one to bring the tribe back. They've all ignored the tribe. They've ignored the sticks, the staff, the one shepherd. They've replaced it. They've duplicated and they reflect it. They don't give you no, <gasps> they don't give you no wow. How's the land going to have a Sabbath and you ain't got no Shabbat? Make it make sense. You want safety for your, your village, your children, their children. But it's vain safety. You begin to code keep a series. It's vanity. It's vain safety. If they ain't got no secure land, man. And by secure, I mean you got a wall of protection. You got the elements. You got each other. Not just anybody who say they got your back. But someone in code. Well, you know they got your back because they got their own back. Someone that say they got your back, but they ain't got the code. That's vain security, man. And what security without no breath? What's breath without security? But in the seventh year shall be a Shabbat of solemn rest for the lamb. Anaga, you're supposed to. Have the husbandry on the land. You're supposed to be tilling and you're here for a reason, ain't you? you are you here for nothing? You're here to serve yourself? Hawa brought you and gave you breath and that sinew that you got that ruach for what? You got ruach for a purpose and you have to serve your purpose. Being a servant is not bad and being a servant is not good depending on what you're serving if you're serving a hijack then being a servant is not good if you're serving the creator then being a servant is your only purpose your only purpose for being here not just to till the land and do hard labor man but to be a light to bear that true greater light to be perfected. 
You got an empty your cup. You're here to serve, man. Not to be no homeborn slave to Egypt. You're here to serve your purpose, to fulfill your purpose. What's your purpose? Your purpose is... <gasps> Your purpose is to spread the breath, spread the foundation, spread the security. By example, how to treat Ahmad as an example, you're serving Hawa by, by fulfilling your purpose and completing the task, man, the goal. Hawa got specific tasks for you Nagas, and all of it comes together as one whole effort. One whole task, one whole effort. You're a teacher. You're helping to shepherd. You're till the land. You're helping to lead by example. You're helping to feed the tribe. You're here to protect your protector. What's your purpose? Serve it. That makes you a servant of the greater Ruach, the greater spirit, the greater light, the greatest light, the greatest frequency, the greatest source. You're not serving no idol. You're not serving your own selfish vanity. Man, you popping off. You walk in your house. You're a husband. You're a great husband. That means you're a great servant. You're a great Khan. You're a great priest. That means you're a great servant. You're a great king or queen. That means you are the greatest servant. Serving the people. Being the servant is Baruch. The more responsibility you got is the greatest, the greater purpose. And you got to serve that purpose, man. We are servants of Hawa. I serve my house. The house of Hashirah, house of Israel, the house of Judah, the house of David. I serve it, man. I serve my house with my wife, my children. <laughs> you know, I'm... I'm 24-7, you know, pops, you know, <laughs> running the flow, you know, popping off, but constantly raising my children, man. I'm serving them. And by serving my house, I'm serving Hawa because I'm teaching them to code and we're coding up from the ground up every day. Oops, somebody spilled something on the floor. <laughs> hey, if I'm right there, I'll go ahead and Wipe it up off the floor. I ain't gonna leave it there for Chef Kane to come get her feet all sticky. <laughs> or guess what? If I know who did it, or you know, if somebody you know is around me, one of my droplets, I'm like, yo, can you handle that? They'll go ahead and handle that because they're serving the house. You teach them to serve. You're feeding them, you're cleaning up, you're doing this stuff constantly, you're serving. Hey, we on Joy World? What's Drop doing? Serving. Putting up pickets. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Serving, man. Putting the ceiling on the wood. Love the conclave. We serving. Watering the plants, the trees. We're serving. Making it right for your fellow Naga to. Have peace, man. Shalom. We got to serve our house to even get to that point of Shalom. You know how much serving we had to do this week to get to this point right now to say Shabbat Shalom? We had to serve our house to get here. We're servants of Hawa. We're servants of that which is good and righteous and purposeful.
giving us a reason to serve. We blew marveling. <laughs> hey, all that is time, you know, time away from others that want that time to drop that drop and to read this or, or, or dissect that and, and, and put our heart bones in it. Yeah, it's fun. We have a good time doing it. That's great. But we're serving. All that drop is serving. You drop in, you, you spread that drop. You're serving, man. Our land is serving. Our land is serving this purpose. Our land is serving the creator. Everything on this earth righteously is in servitude to the righteous. To the most righteous, Hawaii. So you got to get that point. You got to get that clarity. You got to reach that checkpoint to even get to a Shabbat. And definitely to even get to a point where you are, you know, providing the frequency, you know, for your land so that you are keeping that Shabbat on your land and allowing your land to have the Shabbat for itself every seven years. Every seven years, our land is popping off, you know, its own Shabbat. And we don't know our times and laws and, you know, we don't know, you know, if you buy land tomorrow, you know, do you start counting then <laughs> and say seven years since I bought the land or seven years since you prepared the land? I mean, you know, these are, you know, details, you know what I mean? But if you have the hard bone to pursue these goals and this checkpoint and however you can, you do it. Seven years, you know, let's not till the field. Let's not prune our vineyard. And how beautiful it is, you know, across Nagaville to be on the same page and say, okay, we're gonna, you know, use this as our, our checkpoint, you know, we're all on this year right here, you know, we're gonna let the land do its thing. So we're all on the same page. And from this point, we'll count seven years from that point. You know what I mean? We don't know our times, but at least this is our greatest effort to be on one page. And, you know, we're doing it, man. We are in practice. Hey man, Phineas Chris Crossing on a head bones 2024. All right, cool. So, you know, let's start at 2024. Those that have gotten land already, I got time to get it prepared. Got time to get things going. You know, time to start, you know, planting and all that. And then we can all say, hey, all right, 2024. Let's start our checkpoint right there. Feeny is crisscrossing on our head bone. Great American Comet is doing a slash right across America, which is the crisscross of the 2017 flow. 2017 Comet, 2024 Comet, seven years apart. Let's count our seven years from 2024 so that we know in uh, 2031, <laughs> we all going to let our crops do their thing and let our harvest do their thing. And the seventh year shall be a Shabbat of solemn rest for the land, a Shabbat unto Hawa. Thou shalt neither sow your field nor prune your vineyard. That which grows of itself of your harvest shall you not reap. And the grapes of your undressed vine shall thou shalt not gather. So that means on that six year, you know what I'm saying? That's when you are gathering. Oh, I say, man, you're going to gather. You're going to gather more. I'm going to give you even more for this. You get even more for allowing your land to Shabbat to rest. I mean, that's beautiful. That's to the best of 
the knowledge we have, we're putting it to use, man. That which grows of itself on, of your harvest, you should not reap. And the grapes of your undressed vine, you shall not gather. It shall be a year of solemn rest for the land. And the Shabbat produce of the land shall be for food for you. So you, you know, if it's, if it's falling and dropping down and not, you know, it's, it's food for you and for your servant and for the maid and for the hired servant and for the settler by your side that sojourn with you and for your cattle and for the beasts that are in your land shall all the increase thereof be for food. So you're not putting the work in to try to gather all this, you know, produce from your land. It's 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 there for you. It's dropping on. The, it's there for the, you know, they, they say for the animals, you know, it's there for for Nagas that need it. Nagas in need. It's a great way to give back to those in need. Verse eight. And thou shalt number seven Sabbaths of years unto you. Seven times seven years, and there shall be unto thee the day of seven Sabbaths of years, even forty nine years. Then shalt thou make proclamation with the blast of the horn on the tenth day of the seventh month, and the day of atonement shall you make proclamation with the horn throughout all your land, throughout all the Nagaville. Wow. <laughs> so you start your popping offness. Let's say we're going to make a mark in 2024, right? The first seven years is 2031. And basically, seven, 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 right? Seven times. You got 49, seven times seven. That's your Jubilee year. And all Nagaville is popping off. Ain't that Yapa? And you shall hollow the 50th year and proclaim liberty, freedom, man. You see it? You see it, boss? It's about the proclamation of liberty, freedom throughout Nagaville, throughout the land, unto all the inhabitants thereof. It shall be a jubilee unto you, and you shall return every man into his possession and you shall return every man into his family a jubilee shall that 50th year be unto you you shall not sow neither reap that which grows of itself in it nor gather the grapes in it of the undressed vines for it is a jubilee it shall be holy unto you you shall eat the increase thereof out of the field in this year of jubilee you shall return every man unto his possession and if you sell aught unto your neighbor or buy of your neighbor's hand you shall not wrong one another according to the number of years after the jubilee thou shalt buy of your neighbor and according unto the number of years of the crops he shall sell unto you according to the multitude of the years thou shalt increase the price thereof and according to the fewness of the years thou shalt diminish the price of it <laughs> price is going up price is going down for the number of crops does he sell unto you and you shall not wrong one another what does that mean You know how they talk about food prices and all this increase and all these taxes they're putting all these things, man. All this inflation that's wronging your neighbor, man. We shouldn't do that to each other. Shouldn't put no tax on it, man. <laughs> shouldn't put no extra interest on what you're borrowing or, you know, man, what you're giving. You shall not wrong one another. But you shall fear Hawaii, for I am Hawaii, your power, 
Wherefore you shall do my statutes and keep my ordinances and do them. And you shall dwell in the land in safety and the land shall yield her fruit. And you shall eat until you have enough and dwell there in safety. Security, man. What security without your... <sighs> Right, so you need that breath. You got to get the cold, mama, <gasps> wisdom. Then you have safety. Why? Wow. That comes with the protection of fire, water, ether, earth. And if you shall say, what shall we eat the seventh year? Behold, we may not sow nor gather in our increase. Then I will command my Baruch unto you in the sixth year and it shall bring forth produce for the three years you're going to have three years of produce if you listen man all these shortages all these famines are because we are not in cold the farmers should be getting three times the amount gathering on the sixth year enough for three years you shall sow the eighth year and eat of the produce, the old store until the ninth year, until her produce come in. You shall eat the old store and the land shall not be sold in perpetuity, perpetuity for the land is mine. This is what the indigenous was trying to tell. This is what the Kumsen was trying to tell the hijacks, trying to say they're making treaties, selling our land, giving up. 30 million acres of land at a time for these treaties. It's, it's not for us to sell to you. Hawaii says, for the land is mine, for you are strangers and settlers with me. Whoa. All this mine, mine, mine. Aboriginal, Aboriginal. Hawaii has the land. The land is Hawaii's. We are settlers with Hawaii. To be a settler, settler. <laughs> means you got to uh, you know settle with certain rules you don't just you know if you're going to settle a debt if you're going to settle any dispute you got to come together you got to agree <laughs> can two walk together lest they agree for the land is mine and in all the land of your possession you shall grant a redemption for the land. You're hearing familiar themes, redemption, safety. Abundance, man. We are missing our abundance, our inherent abundance. By being out of our frequency. Exodus 20 got us in call. With that, we're keeping our Shabbat for most however everything. No vanity. No slaying and no stealing. No false witnessing. Honoring. Abba Amma. You know? No covetous. Adultery. Now our frequency is ready for the land. Now you spread that frequency. You serve Hawa. Because you are the servants of Hawa. As Hawa says in Leviticus 25, verse 47, And if a stranger who is a settler with you be waxing rich, and your brother be waxed poor beside him, and sell himself unto the stranger who is a settler with thee, with thee, or to be the offshoot of a stranger's family. After that, he is sold. He may be redeemed. That's why Hawaii said in Deuteronomy 28, nobody's going to be able to redeem you, buy you back out of this captivity, but me. <laughs> no one can save you before you can be redeemed. By a person, this captivity, only Hawa can redeem us.
One of his brethren may redeem him or his uncle, uncle's son may redeem him or any that is nigh of kin unto him and his family may redeem him. Or if he be rich, he may redeem himself and he shall reckon with him that bought him for the year that he sold himself to him unto the year of the Jubilee and the price of his sale shall be according unto the number of years, according to the time of a hired servant shall he be with him. And if there be yet many years according unto them, he shall give back the price of his redemption out of the money that he was bought for. And if there remain but few years until the year of Jubilee, then he shall reckon with him according unto his years, shall he give back the price of his redemption. As a servant hired year by year, shall he be with him. He shall not rule with rigor over him in your sight. And if he be not redeemed by any of these means, then he shall go out in the year of Jubilee. He and his children with him. We weren't allowed to have perpetual servants, slaves, none of that. You know, if they agreed, you know, uh, kind of like an indentured servant, they'll call it. If they agreed, okay, I'll give you seven years of service. It's like you do you, these jobs, your servants. <laughs> I'm going to give you seven years of this job, but you can't keep me forever. And certainly not each other. We're not allowed to make slaves of each other, perpetual slaves, all in agreement. And if that jubilee year come, that not going to go free, period. He go, his children go. That's freedom year. That's proclaiming liberty. For unto me, the children of Israel are servants. What are you serving? Are you serving a why? How are you serving? What is your purpose? Are you fulfilling it? Are you serving the purpose of Hawa? The purpose of Hawa is giving you because unto me, the children of Israel are servants, says Hawa. They're my servants. You're not meant to be serving these nations. You Would you rather serve that job, that company? Would you rather serve these presidents and vice presidents? They taking half your check? Or would you rather serve the creator who's giving you everything, land, treasures, Knowledge like Hawa is giving you. Just like your children serve you and you serve them. <laughs> and the energy is balanced in a balanced house. But even though that child is doing what you're asking to do with it being good children, you're giving them everything. You're giving them way more than they can ever give you. All, all you're asking in return is obedience. Righteousness for them to listen and do what is right to do. It's all our Hawaii's ever asked us to do is right, man. Listen and do what is righteous to do. That is us serving Hawaii. We are Hawaii's servants. And they are my servants whom I brought forth out the land of Egypt. And I am your power. Can't win a war without your power. You need. <sighs> wow. Tor. Only. Session. Shabbat Shalom.